Hi everyone, this is Selena. Welcome back to one of my videos. So today I'm bringing to you a uh, an amazing project. It's a crochet recreation of um, Harry Styles Watermelon Sugar J.W.A. Anderson cardigan so this was literally a labor of love so this was an amazing project to crochet i will be linking the original pattern by jw anderson in the down bar it is a knit pattern and obviously this is crochet and i did read it and heavily inspire myself from that pattern just to make this crochet version as similar to the original knit one as possible, if that makes sense. I did take a lot of liberties, however, and this is really my own pattern that I created. I have a Pinterest board um, with all my pictures and with all the inspiration and pictures of Harry Styles wearing this jumper, so don't forget to check that out. So my Pinterest is Selena Veronique Crochet, as in my, all my social media. And yeah, it was really fun to recreate. It's a great project. It's, yeah, there are so many things to say about this project. So sorry if this is a long intro, but it needs to be done. So for this project, you will need Chunky Yarn. So I used this brand, which is Signet Chunky, and I have used um, red, black, orange, yellow and green, red, blue and all of these are Signet Chunky. I will be linking everything in the down bar and you can download the free PDF from my blog selinaveronique.com as always. There will be plenty of pictures on my blog also just to make um, the tutorial easier. However, I did make this tutorial quite easy to follow so if you're a beginner or anything, don't worry because this is really a beginner friendly tutorial. There's nothing complicated about this cardigan, really there isn't. It's just a very long project. So basically I will be linking also how many schemes I used. So that's the chunky version. And I used for this project a uh, six, yes, <laughs> sorry. I used a six millimeter crochet hook I also used some Aran yarn, so by Stylecraft, I will be linking that also. I used a skein of um, Stylecraft Special Aran in shade lipstick. Again, I followed J.W. Anderson's pattern and the trimmings such as this ribbed edging and then the bottom ribbed edging were in Aran yarn, so I did mine in Aran yarn and I used a four and a half millimeter crochet hook for those parts. Again, this is a lot of information I'm giving you. I will be breaking all this down as we go along step by step, so don't be scared. I also needed a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, which I don't know where I've put it, but a tapestry needle, of course, because of all the stitching. I also used one of those pins. Um, I don't know what the exact word in English is. However, I used it just um, when I was stitching some parts. So yeah, that's really handy. And other than that, you will not be needing much. I did have um, some buttons. Again, I will be linking those in the description box. And some darning... Um, thread a needle but that's just basic equipment isn't it so yeah that's all you need for this project and I will be breaking down everything step by step so to begin with I'm just gonna um, explain this pattern a bit so basically in the JW Anderson um, pattern I noticed that there were some squares um, like let's say this orange one which were um, um, just kind of basic squares and then there were more textured squares and this is my recreation of some of the textured squares. I did however keep my squares to just two different squares in different colours. So basically for instance this orange one is the same as the black one and the same as the yellow. And this textured um, pattern is the same for this one. 
I think the green and also for this um, square that's got two different colors but this is actually this pattern just with switching colors I did do a tutorial on this specific one too so don't be worried I will be breaking all this down so basically this is what we're going to do all the squares I will be again writing down the number of squares that you need how many in the different colors you would need and so on on my blog selinaveronique.com so head over there and then I will be showing you how to make this very simple collar then I will be showing you how to make the um, ribbed edgings the bottom and the cuffs and then I will show you how to do um, this blue part right here. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. It was really fun to make. I know it's really um, out of my comfort zone, but I thought it was so fun to recreate this pattern because it's gone so viral and I just thought it would be fun. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. So for this cardigan we are going to be uh, making two different types of squares in eight colours. So basically I have just two patterns um, for the eight different colours if that makes sense. So um, the black, orange and yellow they come in one pattern that is the same but in different colours for those squares and then um, for the red, green and um, this one which is green and black it's the same pattern but using two different colours and basically this is again the same um, stitch so for um, pattern number one we are simply going to be making a slip stitch pop your hook through and we are going to be chaining 19 so just go ahead and chain 19 one two three so once we've chained 19 we are simply going to be placing a half double crochet into the third chain from the hook so just count one two and three and place a half double crochet into that so wrap your yarn around your hook go into the stitch pull up a loop you've got three loops on your hook and pull through those three loops and this creates a half double crochet and the first chain two here counts as a half double crochet throughout so now we are simply going to place another half double crochet into the next chain so just go ahead and do that and basically we are simply going to be placing half double crochets into each um, chain until the end of this row so I'm just gonna let you carry on until the end of this row and I'll show you row two so I finished my first row and this is what it looks like so for row two I am simply going to be chaining two so one and two and this counts as a half double crochet turn your work and obviously this counts as your first stitch with this one so we're simply just going to go into the second stitch and place a half double crochet into that one so just go ahead and place a half double crochet into that and into the next and into the next and I'm just going to let you carry on placing your half double crochets into each stitch until the end of the row and I'll get back to you to show you how to finish this row. So I've almost finished this um, row and I just wanted to show you that I'm going to place a half double crochet in the chain two from the previous row so just go ahead and place a half double crochet into that chain two from the previous row this is what it looks like but as we go along it will straighten out and yeah so don't forget your chain two and now for row three chain two turn your work and basically this is just going to be a repeat of row two so I'm just going to let you repeat row two until you reach 13 rows and once you reach 13 rows just fasten off 
and leave a long tail for sewing if you can and I'll um, just let you carry on with this. So for square number two we are simply going to be making a slip knot so just go ahead and make a slip knot. Pop your hook through and tighten and now we are simply going to be chaining 19 so just go ahead and chain 19 one two three so now that we've chained 19 we are simply going to skip the first chain um, here and go into the second chain and place a double crochet into that so just go ahead and place a double crochet so there we go, pull through two loops, you've got two loops left and go through two loops. And this um, counts as a double crochet and your first um, chain one counts as a single crochet and this will make a lot more sense once we um, go further in this pattern. So next we are going to be single crocheting into the next stitch so place a single crochet into the next stitch and into the next stitch place a double crochet and into the next stitch a single crochet and into the next stitch a double crochet and as you can see we are alternating single crochets and double crochets if you need more help on how to single crochet and double crochet just head over um, I'll be linking my videos on how to single crochet and double crochets in the cards and in the meantime just carry on alternating these until the end of this row so I've almost finished row one and in the last stitch I'm going to place a single crochet into that. So finish your row on a single crochet and this is what it looks like. For row two you are going to be chaining three. So one, two and three. Turn your work and now we are simply going, and this counts as a double crochet and now we are simply going to be doing the exact same alternating double crochets and single crochets. So this is a double crochet, so in the next stitch we are going to be placing a single crochet and this is a double alternation in that we are alternating also from row to row. So basically um, in the next stitch we are placing a double crochet but it's also on top of the single crochet from the previous row. And this is what creates this texture. So basically in the next stitch we are placing a single crochet on top of a double crochet and in between two double crochets. In the next stitch we are placing a double crochet and in the next stitch a single crochet. And this is quite easy to know where you're at because obviously when you see a single crochet in the previous row, which is the smallest stitch, you place a double crochet. And when you see a double crochet in the previous row, which is the biggest stitch, you just place a single crochet on top of that. So I'm just going to let you alternate and I'll get back to you for the end of this row. So I've almost finished this row and I've got two stitches left. So I'm going to place a single crochet into this stitch and then I've got um, the chain one from the previous row you must not forget and place a double crochet into this. So um, don't forget to download my pattern for all um, the details. And so this is what row two will look like and it will straighten out as we go along. So now for row three, it's very simple. It's gonna be the same. So we finished on a double crochet. So now we are going to be chaining one and this counts as a single crochet. Turn your work and basically on top of um, double crochets, we are going to be placing 
single crochets which is what we've just done so in the next stitch which is a single crochet from the previous row place a double crochet so I hope this is making sense it's very simple it's a very simple pattern in the next stitch we are placing a single crochet and in the next stitch a double crochet and in the next stitch a single crochet and in the next stitch a double crochet and in the next stitch a single crochet and so on and so forth and I'll show you what to do at the end of this row so for the end of this row we are going to be so this is the chain three from the previous row and we are simply going to single crochet over this and this is the end of row three so you see this is what it looks like and basically um, it's a very simple repeat pattern where we are simply going to be repeating row 2 and row 3 over and over for 15 rows. So now I'm simply going to show you how to make this um, two color square so it's really easy. Basically it's um, just this textured square that I've just showed you made with um, two colors and I'm just going to show you, it's very simple, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I've just explained the pattern, however I just think it's interesting to show you how to alternate those colors smoothly. Uh, so to begin you are going to make a slip knot and like um, I showed you earlier, you are simply going to be um, chaining 19 and then I'll let you do the first row um, because it will be black and then once you've chained 19 and done your first row, I'll show you how to change colours. So I've just done row one and now I'm just going to show you how to attach your second colour. So this is my technique, this is a teeny bit tricky but not, not too bad. So you are simply going to take your red wool, so this is our last loop here with the black wool and I'm just going to attach um, the red wool so slip it through this black loop and um, just leave a bit of a tail not too long and just fasten this on so just go ahead I'm just simply going to tie one knot and this has fastened off on my um, my yarn just pull this slightly the black wool and now we are simply going to be using the red wool to carry on row two and simply what we are going to be doing with this pattern is alternate red and black from one row to the next so very simple so now I'm going to do row two so I've just popped my hook through like this and I'm just going to chain three one two and three and um, in the next stitch obviously this is black yarn so it's really hard to show black yarn on the camera so I apologize for this however this is um, the pattern unfortunately so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing if that makes any sense so now that we've chained three, we are simply going to go into the next stitch and place our single crochet and we're going to place a double crochet into the next stitch and a single crochet into the next stitch and a double crochet and basically this is just the exact same so I'm just going to let you carry on and I'll meet you back to show you how to um, use your black yarn for the next row. So I've almost finished this row and I'm just gonna finish on a double crochet like we would for row two, like this. And I'm just gonna pull this a bit more than I usually would just because we're gonna manipulate this and I don't want to get it loosened. So basically this is how it looks and what we are going to be doing now 
is using our black yarn. So we used, so the black yarn is still attached on this side. So basically we need to pull it through just so that we can use it easily. These are just loose ends, so just ignore this. And I'm just gonna switch this round just so that I can pull my black yarn through. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pop my hook through here, grab my yarn and pull it through like this, if that makes any sense. And now I'm just simply going to be um, doing the pattern for row three, so chain one, and this goes um, with this stitch here. I've turned my work as you've seen, and this counts as our first single crochet. And we are simply going to go into the next stitch and place a double crochet into that. And then into the next, place a single crochet. And basically you are just simply going to carry on your um, pattern like you would into the next single crochet and into the next, a double crochet. And just carry on and I'll show you what to do when you reach the end of this row to switch back to the red. So I've almost finished this row. I've got one single crochet left to do so I'm just gonna go into this so this as you can see is where I pulled my yarn earlier and I'm simply going to pull it so I'm simply going to um, go into this stitch right here like so and place a single crochet into that and this is how I finish my row. And then to use back my red yarn, I'm simply gonna take um, this and loop it through the last black loop like so. And then I'm just gonna pull it gently just to tighten it. And I'm just gonna let this black yarn loose here and start using my um, red yarn again. So now we are on to row four, so chain three, one, two, and three. Turn your work and you are simply, so this counts as our first double crochet. Go directly into the second stitch and place a single crochet and then a double crochet and then just alternate. See if you download the pattern and you are attentive to your stitches, you'll be absolutely fine. And if you need, um, just count your stitches if you're unsure. So anyway, I'll just let you carry on with your squares. And yeah, that's it for the squares. So now I'm going to show you how to start stitching your cardigan and this is actually the back of your cardigan. So I've placed all the squares like I'm supposed to. So just go to my blog selinaveronique.com and on there I've posted pictures and so on of how um, you should be placing your squares if you want to follow the exact pattern that I'm doing. Obviously you can place your squares any way you want but this is really based on JW Anderson's pattern that I'm inspired by. So just um, either press pause if you can see all the um, colours on the screen or just check out my blog and I have photos of which colours to place where. And so one thing I'd like to say about the stitching is that it seems to be purposefully untidy if that makes any sense. So we're not going to go for like a really tidy um, look for this sweatshirt. We really are going to be going for a more um, trendy vibe and uh, so on. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to stitch um, two squares together and you can apply this to any square that you want. So I've placed my squares how I wanted them. So I'm just going to start stitching this and I'm just going to use um, a mattress stitch to stitch these together. And yeah, you can use whichever stitch that you want. So again, the look we're going for is a really untidy look with um, stitching that will be apparent 
on to the sweater so just don't worry too much about um, the stitching be noticeable because this is the look we're going for. So basically you are going to be stitching all your squares together with this method and then I'll show you how um, to have the total look for this sweater because um, yeah there's going to be a bit of like stitching magic going on. So I've paused my stitching for now just to show you one detail. So this is what it looks like. Like I said, the stitching needs to look a bit untidy. And what we are going to be doing now for um, this part, so this is the black square and the yellow square at the bottom of the cardigan. I'm just going to um, show you like this because I'm stitching this way and we are just going to be making like an extra like um, stitch right here just so that it looks similar to the one to JW Anderson and basically what we are going to do is just take one loose end like so and just go maybe one centimeter down like this and just start um, stitching onto this part in a straight line. I hope this is making sense. So just so that you have this um, black um, stitching visible on this part, if that makes sense. So just go ahead, it, it needs to look a bit messy, so don't worry about that. And this is what I'm going to be doing in a straight line. And then, once I've done that, so let's have a look. I'm not gonna finish, well actually I am gonna finish like this and just go back a bit just so that it looks like um, um, all black line, like so. And this is what it's going to look like. I hope this is making sense. So this is what I'm gonna do, and then once I finished um, this part, I'm just um, gonna fasten off. I'm gonna fasten off now, actually, because I'm quite happy with how it looks. So I'm just gonna tie a knot. So this is your um, your stitch. So this is what it's gonna look like, and this happens um, every time you have a black square. So this is what you are going to do, and this is the only exception um, that we're going to do this in this whole stitching process, if that makes any sense. So when you occur a black square, you are just going to make this extra stitch at the bottom and you need to fasten off this and that's it. And then just carry on stitching all your squares together and this is the only difference for now. So I'm back and I'm going to show you how to sew the front of your cardigan. So your front of the cardigan is actually two panels. So this is one panel and this is the other panel. And basically it's the exact same principle that I just showed you for the back of the cardigan. You are simply going to stitch every... Um, square together so on this panel and there are eight squares all together on each of the two panels and I will be posting on my blog um, really good pictures on the exact um, order of the squares if you want to place them in the exact same color um, scheme that I have. So check out my blog selinaveronique.com because this um, doesn't go into like um, the frame of my video at the moment if that makes any sense. So check out my blog for the pictures and basically I am just going to stitch these two panels um, obviously this panel and then that panel are separate and then um, once I've done that I will show you how to stitch the sleeve and make the sleeve and hi everyone so this is my sleeve and this is how I've assembled my squares so I've got nine squares in total so a row of three on a row of three and, and I will be stitching the seam of the sleeve like this like that and I'll meet you back again just to show you how to assemble the whole jumper 
So I'm back and I'm now going to assemble my cardigan. So basically I've just popped um, the back of the cardigan, I've laid it flat on my table and this is the right side um, with the right squares, um, if that makes any sense. So I will have popped pictures on my blog on what's the top of the cardigan and what's the bottom of the cardigan and now I'm just going to pop my um, two front panels on top of the back. So here we go, I've popped both um, panels on top of the back of the cardigan. Again, I will be popping pictures on my blog on which side um, is which and so on. If you want to recreate the exact same cardigan as um, yeah me. So now we're just going to start stitching the top of the cardigan like so and I'm just going to jump right in. So I've just taken some red thread, you can use whichever colour you want, obviously um, this is going to be the style of the cardigan. So now that I've attached my red thread onto the back of the cardigan, I've done a double knot, I'm just going to start stitching the front panel um, onto that like I usually would. So I'm just going to use a mattress stitch but you can use whichever stitch you want. So and basically I'm just going to stitch this onto the back panel, so the front panel, and then once I finished this side I'm just going to carry on and just stitch the other side directly onto the back panel too, like so. So yeah, so it's going to be pretty straightforward. So I've just finished um, my seam, my top seam, I'm going to show you on camera. So I'm going to be fastening off and then tidying up my loose end. I will be linking my video right here on how to tidy up your loose ends. And now that we've stitched the top part, so this is the middle. So um, if that makes any sense, the front of the cardigan, that's what I, the word I'm looking for. And now we are going to be um, stitching on our sleeve. So I'm going to be placing my sleeve like this in that direction and make sure that your seam for the sleeve is facing down, if that makes sense. And I'm just going to start stitching the sleeve onto the cardigan. So I've attached my yellow yarn onto my sleeve like so and now I'm just going to um, start stitching the front of the sleeve to the front of the cardigan. So just make sure it's all nice and symmetrical and just start stitching the sleeve onto your cardigan again using the mattress stitch and just make sure as you go along that you are um, pulling this so to speak tightly just because you don't want it to be like bulky stitchy looking but yeah just carry on doing that and we are going to be going all the way around so just carry on stitching this and then once you reach the top um, just go down so just you'll flip this over and sew the other side to the back panel if that makes sense. So this part is stitched to the front panel and then you're just going to go around and stitch the back of the sleeve to the back panel and then I'll meet you back to show you what to do. So I'm back and I've just finished um, stitching my sleeve onto my cardigan like so and now what we are going to be doing, I'm just going to show you on camera as best I can, we are simply going to carry on stitching our cardigan. So this is the sleeve and we are simply going to carry stitch down the side seam of the cardigan. So so welcome back, so I've just finished sewing all my different parts together, I hope you can see on camera. So I've stitched my jumper, as you can see, I've 
made it look a bit untidy. I've stitched on my sleeves also like I showed you. And now we are going to move on to the trimmings of this cardigan. So first of all, we are going to make the red collar. So this is what my um, collar looks like now. And I've already made my collar. So don't worry, I will um, give you the step-by-step -step tutorial to make this collar in just a minute. I've just done mine just to show you now. And basically, I am going to be stitching it on like this. There we go. And this is what it's going to look like. So without further ado, I'm just going to move on to the tutorial for this collar. So to make your collar, you will be using your 6mm crochet hook and you will be using your red chunky yarn. So to show you, I will be using yellow yarn. So you are simply going to start by making a slip knot. Once you've made your slip knot, pop your hook through. And what we are going to be doing is chaining 54. So just chain 54. One, two, three. So I've gone ahead and just made a sample, but the principle is the same. So you should have 54 chains. And once you've done that, you have to count one, two, and three skip those three first chains and go into the fourth chain from the hook. So just wrap your yarn around your hook, go into that fourth chain, take your yarn, pull it through, take your yarn, pull through two loops, take your yarn, pull through two loops, and you have completed a double crochet and this first three chains counts as your first double crochet. And basically you are going to go into the next stitch and place a double crochet into that. And into the next stitch and place a double crochet into that. And what we are going to be doing is placing a double crochet into each and every stitch until the end of this row. And I'll meet you back to show you row two. Okay, so I've just finished the first row and for row two it's very simple. We are simply going to chain three, so one, two and three, turn our work and now we are going to be working double crochets into each double crochet from the previous row. So this counts as our first double crochet in this first stitch and we're simply going to go into the second stitch and place a double crochet into that. So just go ahead and place a double crochet into that and then into the next and into the next. And I'm just going to let you carry on until the end of this row and I'll show you the end of the row. So here we go, I've almost finished my row and I just wanted to show you the end of this row because here we have the chain three from the previous row and this does count as a stitch so we are simply going to pop a double crochet into that. So just go ahead and pop a double crochet into that. And this is what your um, collar should look like, bigger, of course. And now for row three, you are simply going to be repeating row two. So chain three and then pop a double crochet into each and every stitch without forgetting the chain three from this row. And just carry on repeating row two for nine rows in total. So you should have nine rows total. And then you are simply going to fasten off and I'm going to show you how to sew it onto your cardigan. So what I've done is I've placed it um, symmetrically onto um, this middle part and we are going to be stitching it directly onto um, the cardigan, this part and then the other side. And what I've done is that I've placed a safety pin at the center part right here just to keep it in place whilst I um, I sew the collar in just because I it might move around a bit and for this type of project it can be a bit awkward so just go ahead and place some safety pins I've only got one so I've just placed it at the center but if you need more just go ahead and do that and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to sew in my collar. 
So I've gone ahead and placed my yarn onto my tapestry needle. I've taken a piece of red yarn, quite a long piece as you can see, and what I've done is I've already knotted it onto my project and this is what it looks like. I know this is red on red, so it can be a bit, um, yeah. But anyways, so what we are going to do is the exact same stitching. So I'm gonna use a mattress stitch and sew it directly onto the project like so. So I'm really just um, sewing it edge to edge, if that makes any sense. And I'm simply going to go all the way around the collar um yeah and basically once i um, reach the end of my sewing i will simply be fastening off and then sewing in my loose end and so just go ahead and do that and then i'll show you what i'm going to do next okay so i've just finished stitching on my collar so this is what it looks like and now i'm going to show you how to do the um, trimmings at the bottom, so the red um, ribbed bottom of the cardigan, and it will be the same for the sleeves. So I'm so I've already made mine, and this is what the bottom looks like. So you see, it's a ribbed um, edging. And basically I'm now going to show you how to create it. This needs to measure in the bottom part 126 centimeters in total. So I will be writing all of this on my blog and obviously in um, the free pattern that you can download from my blog. So this is what you will be doing for um, the bottom of the cardigan and then for each sleeve. But I will get to the sleeves later on. But um, it will be the same technique. So you are just going to be making a slip knot. So just go ahead and make a slip knot. And now you are going to be chaining 14. So just chain 14. One, two, three. So I've chained less, but the principle will be the same. So what you are going to be doing now is skipping that first chain from the hook and go into the second and place a single crochet into that. So just go ahead and place a single crochet into that. And the first chain one counts as a single crochet. You will go into the next stitch and place another single crochet and you will have guessed this is going to be a row of single crochets. So just go ahead and place a single crochet into each and every um, chain. So I've almost finished my chain because obviously it's a lot smaller. There we go. And this is what my row looks like. And for row two, we are going to chain one, turn our work, and this counts as our first single crochet, which goes with this first stitch right here. So we're just gonna go into the second stitch, and what we are going to be doing is placing a single crochet into that, but into the back loop only to create the ribbed effect. So basically, if you turn your project like so, you will see there are two strands on each stitch. And what you are going to be doing is going just in the back strand like so. So just go into the back strand, place your single crochet into this. And this is what it's going to look like. You are going to do the same in the next single crochet. So just go into the back loop only and into the next and into the next and into so now this is going to be our chain one from the previous row and it does count as a single crochet so just go ahead and place a um a single crochet into that and there we go and this creates, so this is what it's going to look like. It will straighten out as we go along. And this creates a ribbed effect. So now you are going to chain one, turn your work. 
And this again counts as a single crochet and you are going to go into this um, stitch directly and again just go into the back loop only. So this is what you're going to be doing row after row. Again go into the back loop only and into the back loop and into the back loop. And we've almost reached the end of the row and you were simply going to go into the single crochet, um, sorry, into the chain one that we did and just go into that and place your last single crochet into this. And this is what it looks like. Yours will be wider, of course. And just repeat this over and over and just go into the back loop only of each and every stitch until you reach the measurement of 126 centimeters. I will be writing um, the measurements in inches to you on my blog, so just head over there, selinaveronique.com, to um, see the measurements in inches. And this is what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to let you carry on and I'll um, show you how to do the cuffs. So now I've got my um, ribbing for the bottom and we you are going to be doing two um, ones for the um, sleeves part and basically you are simply going to do that exact same technique, chain 14 and then you are going to be doing this but for um, a smaller amount of rows and you will be doing this for 60 rows so make two cuffs so I've got my other cuff here and make two of those for 60 rows and I'll meet you back to show you how to stitch um, those onto your cardigan. Okay, so what I've done is I've placed my ribbing just underneath my cardigan. I folded my cardigan symmetrically and I've placed this border symmetrically also. And I've got my loose end, um, which is quite long actually, that I'm going to use for sewing in. And basically what we are going to be doing first is securing with a safety pin again I'm just going to secure my project in the middle just so that it kind of gives it stops it moving around so much if you know what I mean and now we are going to start stitching this cardigan so just pop your needle through and I'll show you what to do. So what you are going to begin by doing is placing your ribbing just underneath the um, cardigan like so if you can see so about one centimeter again I will be putting um, on my blog how much this is in inches but that's like probably one centimeter and this is gonna go on top and what we are on top of the ribbing and basically we are going to be sewing um, the project onto the um, the cardigan and basically the ribbing and we want the stitching to be apparent so this is very much based on JW Anderson's project I will be linking all of this in the description box in my blog the original pattern and basically um, this is what you are going for so I'm just going to zoom in so basically I've went ahead and done some stitches and this is what you want um, your project to look like so in a straight line you are just going to go across and this is what it looks like inside and you can see I've popped the ribbing underneath and I'm simply going to stitch and this is the front of your cardigan so the right side of your cardigan and the look we're going for is really to have that stitching apparent onto um, the cardigan so basically um, I've got my long tail and um, I'm just gonna go around the whole cardigan doing that stitching just so that it um, looks um, like JW Anderson's cardigan. I did do a couple of more stitches here at the corner just to secure it because this is the front opening and I just wanted it nice and secured and I'm just going to let you carry on and meet you back to show you the sleeves and the rest of the pattern. 
So I'm back and I finished stitching on my bottom edge and I'm simply going to be doing the exact same principle with the sleeves. So I'm just going to let you um, stitch your edging on the sleeve the same way that we've done this. And now once we've done that I'm just going to show you how to do the um, front of the cardigan. So. You will notice there's a blue um, front to the cardigan and I've already done this one and I'm now going to do this side and we are going to be sewing buttons also onto this. So I'm just going to start showing you how to make this edging. So for this part you will be using a 6mm crochet hook and chunky yarn. So I've just gone ahead and attached this yarn so I'm going to try and show you on camera where I've attached it. So this is the top where we've just um, stitched on the um, collar and you are simply going to be, so this is the side we're going to work on and the front of the cardigan and basically you're just going to tie your yarn um, onto any stitch. Once you've done that you'll simply take your hook, go back into that stitch and you are simply going to chain one. So once you've chained one, you are now going to start placing a single crochet all the way along to, until the bottom of the cardigan. And basically you are just going to be placing a single crochet um, all along this edge as um, balanced as possible, if that makes any sense. So basically you are going to try placing a number of stitches um, that will make the project look good if that makes any sense. So there is no required number, just try and place a number that seems good for you. So just go ahead and place single crochets all the way along. I would suggest to place less than more because you do want it to kind of look good and I always find that it looks better if um, the project is a bit stretched out rather than if there are too many stitches it can look a bit lumpy if that makes any sense even though I hate that word. So basically just go ahead and place your single crochets until the bottom of your cardigan you will be including this edging that we've just sewed so I think yeah so just carry on until the bottom right here placing your single crochets. So here we go, I've placed all my single crochets um, onto this project and what I'm going to do for row 2 is chain 3, 1, 2 and 3 and this counts as our first double crochet, turn your work, so yes, this project is really, it's really um, bulky, so it's going to take a bit of manoeuvring. So here we go, I've turned my work, apologies. And now that I've turned my work, this counts as my first double crochet. So we're gonna go into the second um, single crochet and place a double crochet into that and into the next. And basically what we are going to be doing is placing a double crochet into every single crochet from the previous row until you reach the top of the cardigan where you will be placing a double crochet into that chain one that you did. Fasten off and tidy up your loose ends and then I'll show you what to do to sew your buttons onto the project. So I'm back and I finished my sweatshirt at last. Um, it's quite a long project, I'm not going to lie to you. So basically the last thing that we need to do is to sew on some buttons. So I'm going to sew on my buttons. Buttons. I'm going to sew one on at the top right here. So I hope you can see I've got my darning needle and my darning thread. They're black. So basically you're simply going to be darning your, um, your um, button onto your um, project. So yes, yeah, so I'm just going to um, place a good number of them. Um, so just go ahead and do this. Just darn your button in to the project. So now that I've sewed my first button, I'm simply going to be sewing my next one just underneath it. 
I will be writing on my blog the um, distance between both those buttons and also I will be um, sewing eight in total. So yeah, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to let me know in the comments and if you like that type of content. And in the meantime, bye bye.